Hello, everyone. I am so sorry this has taken so long. I will be giving a channel update soon, and I have been a very, very busy bee. Um, so I do apologize for the delay between number six and seven, but today I am here for the seventh in the book club series on manifesting. So as you all know, um, anyone who is watching this for the first time, this is a series where I am reviewing this wonderful book. Um, sorry, I just sorted my watch out. Manifest, Seven Steps to Living Your Best Life by Roxy Nafosi. And because this is a series, you will find the playlist of all the, the previous six recordings before. So please do listen to this in order. Otherwise, it's not gonna make much sense. Now, I enjoy these book club sessions as much as I hope you do, because for me, this is a crucial part of walking my talk. When I'm doing this, it really enforces my daily practice. And my channel is really focusing on what we can all do. There's loads of different tools and techniques, some which will resonate with you, some which won't, which will help us all move forward to focusing on our future, our here and now, how do we enjoy our lives to the maximum effect. And manifestation has been something I just have been practicing for a long while, and I must say it really works. Of course, like everyone else, sometimes I get off target and I slip into bad habits, but luckily the more you do it, the more you have those tools in your tool box to get back in really quickly. And I've got all my lovely plants to help me too. So without further ado, this is number seven, Please, 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 everyone go and buy a copy of this beautiful book because you're going to see as we go through it, there's lots of different exercises that you can do that you can actually do in the book. So it almost becomes a living journal for you, which is really lovely. It's orange, which is my favourite colour, which really helps. So I carry this with me anywhere, everywhere because I just feel it's got a really lovely energy behind it. Now, last time we got up to page 73, um, step three. And today we're going to be starting on page 73, which is stepping out of your comfort zone. So as usual, I'm just going to read through the book and butt in with some comments when I feel it's ready. OK, are we ready? Let's get started. So stepping out of your comfort zone. Once we have understood the self-sabotaging cycle and the requirement to be okay with some degree of discomfort, we can align our behavior in the most powerful and magnetic way of all, by regularly and continuously stepping outside our comfort zone. To manifest change, we must first create change. We must first do something different. We must challenge our fears and doubts, we must act as our future self would act, and we must show the universe how ready and willing we are to step into our power. Now, I'm just going to show you, hopefully you've all got the book here, but there's so many nice things that are marked out in this book. You can see I've got bookmarks all over the place. So really, you know, don't be afraid to, to make marks in it and do things that really resonate with you where you need some extra help. Okay, lovely. I dropped my glasses, they're really wonky, so I apologise for that, I'm always doing that. On any manifesting journey, you will be required to step outside your comfort zone. It's non-negotiable. Every single time you step outside your comfort zone, you attract abundance to you. This is because magic happens outside of your comfort zone. People often say to me, I'm thinking of quitting my job, should I do it? or I've had this idea for a new adventure, should I go for it? My answer is always the same, absolutely yes. When you begin to realize that you have the power within you to create a wonderful, exciting and abundant life for yourself, you will naturally start to think of ways that you can step outside your comfort zone. The journey of manifesting is always accompanied with inspiration, creativity and an influx of ideas that will just come to you seemingly out of nowhere. You might be meditating, about to fall asleep, out for a walk or talking to a friend, and an idea will flow in. I'd like to think of these ideas as little gifts from the universe. They come to you for a reason. They're an opportunity for you to step outside your comfort zone so that you can create the change you need to get to where you want to be. 
they're an opportunity for you to show the universe that you are not held back by fear and doubt. When the ideas come, do not ignore them. Instead, make the self-loving decision to take action and step outside of your comfort zone. Here are a few ways to help you step outside your comfort zone and into manifesting your power. One, be clear on your why. Before stepping out of your comfort zone, be clear on why you want to do so. The why is what will drive you through the discomfort. The why is what will keep you focused and connected to your vision and keep you motivated if you were met with any challenges or obstacles. Frequently asked question, how do I find out my why, what my why is? Whenever you think of something you want to manifest, ask yourself, what do I think achieving that goal will do for me energetically, emotionally, physically, mentally, or spiritually? How will it affect my day-to-day -day life and my feelings of peace, contentment, self-love, and joy? Such important advice. You know, when you really, it's really worth feeling into it. You know, we've seen throughout this book that you've really got to feel the emotions associated with what you manifest, not just have it as a tick list on a to-do. You've got to make it a living, breathing, really, really important thing for you. For example, let's imagine that your friend tells you that a, that a position is opening up at the firm she works at and the role feels just perfect for you. You immediately decide to apply, but then see that as part of your application process, you have to film yourself talking to the camera. If you're someone who's always struggled with being in front of the camera, this would require you to sit through some discomfort whilst you step outside your comfort zone. So you would really need to identify your why so that it can drive you through the discomfort. It could be, this job would enable me to work in an area I'm truly passionate about. I would feel excited to go to work in the morning and doing something I actually love would make me feel more at peace. It would bring more joy into my life and it would improve the overall quality of my life. By remaining focused on your why, you will be able to gain the momentum and courage required to film the clip despite feeling a little bit uncomfortable or afraid because you can clearly see the bigger picture and the end goal. I think that's so important. You know, when I first started this YouTube channel, it was so uncomfortable for me. It really involved me going throughout my, outside my comfort zone because I absolutely hated seeing myself on camera and listening to myself. But my my real why there were lots of whys which I can go into another time but to build a community where people felt included not excluded um, which there's been so much of over the last sort of two years in general over life but in particular it's come to the forefront over the last two years so for me pushing myself out my comfort zone has had so many benefits that I didn't even realize at the start I've met such amazing people I've learned and continuing to learn so much about myself. I'm developing new skills that I, I didn't even know that I could do. And I'm really enjoying learning and progressing again. And yes, it, it is uncomfortable sometimes, but each time I can see it getting a little bit better and a little bit better. And, you know, I really do feel part of this community now. So step two, removing excuses. Excuses are nothing more than a form of self-sabotage. They give us an out. Excuses come in many forms, but most commonly they sound like this. I'm too busy. I'm too tired. It's too difficult. I'm not ready. I'll do it another day. I don't have the resources. It didn't work last time I tried. I won't be able to do it perfectly. I'm not good enough. Sure, we all recognise a few of those. But we must expose our excuses for what they really are, an expression of our fear and doubt. They come out to hold us back from moving forward and stepping into our power when we subconsciously feel that we're not ready yet for greatness. The way to remove excuses is to question every aspect of them. By questioning them, we take away their power. The next time you say to yourself, I'm too busy, ask yourself, why am I telling myself that? What am I afraid of? What would happen if I removed that excuse? Step three, don't give up when faced with challenges. 
when we step outside our comfort zone, everything will be new, which means that inevitably we will be faced with some obstacles to overcome. One of the most common characteristics of any successful individual is their ability and willingness to persist through challenges. I'm sure that every one of us can remember a time when we have buckled and given up at the first hurdle. Why do we do this? Because challenges trigger one's insecurities and test our self-worth. If we are faced with something that we find difficult, we question our own abilities, or if a plan fails, falls through, we worry that we are simply unlucky. We allow challenges to reinforce our limiting and subconscious beliefs that we're not worthy of having the things we desire most. So what do we then do? We run. We run because our innate tendency is to escape from things that make us feel bad. But if you want to manifest successfully, you must resist the urge to give up and instead find an alternative way to move forward. I've always been obsessed with reading, watching and hearing the stories of incredibly successful people from CEOs to world famous musicians. What I find most inspiring about their journeys is learning about the times they had to persist in the face of challenge, or when they had to think of creative new ways to overcome a potential deterrent to their dreams. It reminds me that the road to success or to manifesting everything you want is not always easy or straightforward. You have to show up for yourself, take action and keep going, even when you might feel like throwing in the towel. I know that if I had given up at every challenge or opportunity that came my way, I would never ever have succeeded in manifesting all the things that I now have into my life. My own story was not a case of visualizing what I wanted, taking action and then seeing all of it come to me straight away. I still had to face rejections and hurdles, but I never allowed them to stop me from moving forward. I never let them derail me or distract me from my goal. In fact, I flat out refuse to be defeated by obstacles. When something doesn't go right first time, I simply think of another way to do it. Challenges are an inevitable part of life. Rather than seeing them as limitations, I urge you to begin to see them as gifts and opportunities. Challenges give us a chance to show up for ourselves, to learn something new, to build strength, knowledge and resilience. Challenges push us in new directions and give us new perspectives. Make a choice right now to be guided by challenges that you may face instead of being put off by them. In doing so, you send a message to the universe that says, I am stronger than the challenge I am faced with. And then the universe will reward you with your self-belief and abundance. Now, Bryce and I talk about this all the time, whether we call it challenges, when we call it friction, whether we call them problems, obstacles, whatever word we're going to use for ourselves. But I know from personal experience, and I've been around long enough to know that this is so true, the sense of satisfaction and the improvement in your confidence and what you manifest into your life when you face those challenges and you don't give up is second to none. So really go for this folks, you know, that there's a support network here for you, please use it. And I really hope in the comments below, we can all sorts, you know, help each other through any challenges or obstacles or friction we might be seeing. Number four, the five second rule. I'm smiling because I like this one. One of my favorite speakers, Mel Robbins, has an amazing exercise that you can use whenever you're faced with an opportunity to step out of your comfort zone, but are feeling fear or trepidation about doing so. She calls it the five second rule. Mel says, the moment your instincts fire up, but you feel yourself hesitate, that's when you use the five second rule. You have five seconds, start counting backwards to yourself from five to one, and then move before you reach zero. She says that if you have an impulse to act on a goal, you must physically move within five seconds or your brain will kill the idea. I love this one. I use it a lot. I use it as technique before myself, before I hosted my first ever in-person workshop. I was about to go on stage for the first time and my nerves had got the better of me. I was backstage behind a curtain. The microphone was on. I could hear the people settling down, ready for me to begin. And then the imposter syndrome hit me. What the hell was I doing hosting a self-love workshop? I'm not a public speaker. I'm not experienced enough. 
I'm going to let them all down. This was a stupid idea. My inner cricket was trying to, critic was trying to paralyze me from stepping onto the stage. I counted down five, four, three, and then bam, I moved. I put one front foot in front of the other, smiled at all the faces in front of me and began to talk. Within 10 minutes, I knew something for sure. This was exactly where I was supposed to be. I suddenly felt so at home as I spoke to these wonderful men and women in front of me about the power and importance of self-love. Now, countless workshops later, I use that technique before I step onto any stage. I'll say this again, magic happens outside your comfort zone. Now, some of these you might want to, there's some really nice little bold bits and bits in brackets and things like that. So some of you might actually want to write some of these out as some of your reminders that you see just to keep you on track. I love doing that. So create healthy habits. By now, I hope it's clear that our self-worth is integral to our ability to manifest and the way in which we behave acts as an indicator to the universe as to how high or low our self-worth is. One way that we can align our behavior to raise our self-worth and boost our manifesting powers is to deliberately incorporate high vibe daily practices into our routines. We can take self-love practices and turn them into healthy practices. I'm just watching my new cat Mitzi is just having such a lovely time in the sunshine. Um, so she's a great inspiration to me at all times, all my animals are. Some of my favorite self-love practices are journaling, mantras, affirmations, meditation, daily walks, skincare routines, long baths, self-care, breath work, exercise, yoga, gratitude. So it's worth really taking a little bit of time and saying, what are your self-love practices? And making sure that you allow time every single day for one of those. So for example, for me, as soon as we finish the recording this, I will be taking some of my dogs who are asleep on the sofa there out for my lovely walk, which is just definitely top of one of my list of my self-care practices. Developing healthy habits is an effective way to align our behavior so that we can manifest more effortlessly. For me, healthy habits are the basis of any self-development journey. Our habits become our foundation. And when we change our habits, we change our life. True and lasting change is really created in the small changes that you make day to day. So to use habits to drive us forward, the things we want to manifest into our lives, we must start forming habits that are in line with our future self. Healthy habits help us to embody the person that we want to become. In other words, be the energy we want to attract. For example, if you want to manifest becoming a successful leader in business, you can begin to form the habits a leader in business might have, such as waking up early, making daily to-do lists, and having a daily meditation practice to help manage stress or overwhelm, or carving out daily dedicated learning time. In committing to these practices from now, you begin to align your behavior with the person you want to become. Your habits help you to raise your vibration to match the energy of your future self. Our habits and our daily practices change our lives. Let's look at how different your day might look if you were someone that did not incorporate daily practices in the morning, person A, as opposed to someone that did, person B. Person A, you wake up to your alarm, roll over and immediately begin strolling through your social media feed. After 10 minutes, you get up, turn on the news, jump in the shower and quickly get ready before rushing through your breakfast and heading to work. Person B, you wake up early to give yourself time to enjoy your daily practices. You roll over and press play on a 10 minute positive affirmations track before getting out of bed. You then mindfully enjoy your morning coffee ritual before exercising for 20 minutes shower and get dressed whilst listening to your favorite music then sit down to eat a nutritious and delicious breakfast before heading to work person b has done nothing extraordinary here they have simply added three or four simple self-loving practices into their routine 
and committed to making the time for them. Yet can you imagine how differently the rest of their day might look compared to person A's? Can you imagine then how different person B's entire week, month or year would look compared to person A's? Motivational author John C. Maxwell says, you will never change your life until you change something you do daily. The secret of your success is found in your daily routine. So now we've got one of the exercises. And as you can see, there's room for you to do it in your copy of the book, if you so wish. So exercise. In the box below, write down three daily practices you will begin to incorporate into your life. Make a commitment to yourself to do them every day for 60 days. The number of days it's said to take form a habit. An example given in the book is, one, I will wake up at 7 a.m. daily. I will journal every evening before bed instead of scrolling through my phone. And number three, I will exercise every morning, whether that be a walk, a stretch or a hit class. So what I really want you to do is pause this now and take the time before you go on any further, I'm strict, to write down what three things you're going to commit to, to doing for the next 60 days. And this is really, really important. So make them things that are challenging, but that you really can commit to. And if you're driving, then go back and do this when you get to your destination. Continue to incorporate more and more healthy habits when you feel you're able to, but don't overwhelm yourself with too many at once. The more healthy habits we have in a day, the more opportunities we have to practice self-love and increase our ability to manifest all the things we want. Authenticity. I had no idea that being your authentic self could make me as rich as I've become. If I had, I'd have done it a lot earlier. That was by Oprah Winfrey. Hmm. We won't get into that subject here now. As well as incorporating daily practices into your routine, being proactive in reaching your goals, becoming the energy you want to attract and stepping outside your comfort zone, aligning your behaviour also requires you to live authentically. Authentically. I said that wrong, didn't I? So I'll say that again. Aligning your behaviour also requires you to live authentically. It requires you to align what you do with what you think and who you really want to be. Authenticity is an essential ingredient for successful manifestation, but because we become our most magnetic when we live and express our truth. Just think about the most magnetic people you know, the ones who walk into a room and light it up, the people who seem to always have others gravitating towards them. They are most often the people who are just completely unapologetically and authentically themselves. They are proud of who they are, comfortable in their own skin and are never afraid to be different or stand out. I find time and time again that when anyone makes a decision to stop pretending to be something they are not and instead to embrace their most authentic selves, they thrive. I've received testimonials for countless of men and women who have attended one of my workshops and then use the motivation from the session to let go of jobs, people and ideas were not, that were not in line with their truth. They always describe the same story. Once they let go of them, they create a space to nurture the things that supported their most authentic selves. For example, starting a new job, doing something they were actually passionate about, finally speaking out about the things that mattered to them, or only surrounding themselves with people who they felt truly understood by. Without exception, as soon as they began to do these things, they flourished. We are unstoppably magnetic when we are unapologetically ourselves. So how do we become connected with our most authentic selves? We must first learn to let go of who we think we should be, who other people expect us to be, and who we once were. Only then can we uncover who we really are now. From our earliest years, we search for clues from the people around us to tell us how to behave and how to be loved. We take note of when we do something that makes us lovable and we do it more, we do more of it. As we grow up, we continue this pattern, molding ourselves based on the feedback we get from our family, friends and community. We are taught to look for external validation and associate our sense of self-worth with the opinions and judgments of others. 
It's through this process that we develop our people-pleasing tendencies, which becomes the enemy of authenticity. To begin the journey of discovering our most authentic selves, we must first gain awareness. Every time we take action, we must recognize that we have a choice to make. The choice is this, do I behave to please others or do I behave to honor myself? If we choose the former, we inevitably sacrifice aligning our behavior towards our goals, dreams, and visions. Energy is directional. It is simply impossible to direct our energy towards seeking external validation while simultaneously directing it towards the person that we want to be or the thing that we want to manifest. I often speak to Wade, the father of my son, about authenticity, as he is an incredibly passionate about others to discover their truth and express their most authentic selves. Wade uses a metaphor of a garden to explain the process. He says, Imagine yourself as a garden. Your deepest sense of self-love, worth and truth are the soil from which everything grows. Your conditioning and your life experiences so far mean that the garden is filled with different plants, but not all of them have been put there by you. Some of them are weeds which help keep you from growing. Others are plants that are not native to who you really are and simply no longer feel like they belong in your garden. The process of expressing your most authentic self begins first by identifying those weeds and unwanted plants and then gently removing them. Getting down to the roots and taking them out so that the soil in your garden can be free of anything harmful. Then, once you feel like you've cleared out the garden of those weeds and plants that are no longer necessary, all of your limiting beliefs and those ideas that do not serve you, you can begin to choose what goes in. You can nourish and care for the plants that empower you and you can choose new ones that express who you really are and who you want to be. You get to choose exactly what your garden looks like. You get to create every part of it and then nurture it with gentleness, compassion, love and respect. Ultimately, you deserve to be a person of your own making, one who powerfully and beautifully celebrates you, who you choose to be, regardless of anyone else's opinions. The journey to discover and express your most authentic self is then one that will take time, but one that will be worth every step. The more you're connected to who you really are and what you really desire, the more magnetic you become and the greater your manifesting power. Every time you act, ask yourself, is this aligned with what I think, what I believe and who I want to be? Aligning your behavior is manifesting in action. The things you do day to day, the way you behave, the way you act and the way you treat yourself, it all matters. The universe is responding to everything that you do. Aligning your behavior requires you to be proactive, take action, embody the person you want to become, move beyond your limiting beliefs or fears, step outside of your comfort zone, live authentic authentically and cultivate self-love through daily practice creating healthy habits and committing to your own well-being. So we've got up to page 85, which is the end of step three. And step four coming next is going to be overcoming tests from the universe. So lots of homework this week, folks. Um, I want everyone to have such fun in really looking, what do they stand for? What, what do you stand for? What are your core values? Who is the person you want to be? And what actions can you take every single day that aligns with that? Um, it's fun. Please share what's working for you below. One of the important things about this community, and I do check all the comments, might not be the same day, but I promise I do check them all, is please share what's working for you and share what's not. You know, it, it, half the time we learn best by trying things and if it doesn't work that's fine we can cross that off the list and try something different so please 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 do share anything that you can feel comfortable below because it really motivates others um and that's what this is about i'm i'm doing this to help build a community to help each other along this path and as bryce and also i always say we're all just walking each other home which is one of ram das's quotes and we are so enjoy the journey. I promise I won't leave it so long before the next one. 
please do um, let me know below how you're getting on and um, have a wonderful week, everyone, creating your new cells. Thank you for listening. <laughs>